Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So some of you have been asking me about forms, figure forms, okay? The figure form, forms, what ifs. You guys have been asking me about how I do these forms, this uh, silhouette type of forms. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you in this video how I do this type of silhouette forms. Because I know that some people have been like, dude, show me how to do that form. I'm going to show you how I do this form, okay? Little, little people, big people, I don't know, people. And I'm going to use this canvas to show you. Maybe we, maybe we switch it like that. Uh, no, probably the other way. That way we can do, yeah, something like that. Something like that, yeah. So here we go. You know what, I actually have to show you the whole thing because then you're gonna be confused if you don't see the whole thing. Nice to see you, Jolly. By the way, I'm not in the bathroom. This toilet paper is to clean my brush. <laughs> All right. So let me show you, okay? I'm gonna get a round brush like this. It's a number four. Round brush, okay? And I'm gonna put some paint right here, some black paint. You guys can see it? Yeah. And I'm gonna put my oil next to it. That way you guys can see the whole thing. All right? Check it out. So I'm gonna do a little figure right here as it's walking, right? Sometimes you guys see my fingers and you're like, what the hell, how'd you do that? Or why you did that? I start with the head, okay? And then I'll do a body. And the way I do it is that I just press with my brush. Okay? Check it out. See, the, the whole thing is that they're doing something. They're kind of doing something, some sort of gesture, okay? That's if they're going away. As you can see, they could be coming, but if the head is disattached from, their, from the body, they're going somewhere. If the, te if the head's attached, they're probably coming somewhere, from somewhere, okay? Coming to you. Let me show you right here. Uh, right here. I'm gonna attach the head. Or maybe I did it the wrong way, who knows? Bear with me, guys. Look at that. You see? The whole point of this exercise, guys, because I know I'm gonna start doing courses. I'm gonna start doing courses on, on, a, on a website called Teachable. I'm gonna start teaching courses, painting courses that are much more, um, if you like what you're seeing here, you're gonna love that because they're much more, Intense. I'm gonna go step by step as, as, as to everything, but at least let me show you guys here how it is that I do this this type of thing. Now, if you want to do two people holding hands, right? It's very simple. You just really have to have a little bit of imagination, okay? And and not be afraid of the brush doing its thing, okay? You want the brush to do its thing. You see that? The trick also happens to do with keeping the paint creamy. If the paint's not creamy, you're gonna start getting shit like this, watch. And then I'm gonna show you. You're gonna start getting, you're gonna start getting shit like this, that is, no, because I keep my paint very creamy. You're not gonna see it. But some people, some people do very dry painting, so it doesn't allow you to move. And I'm going to show you that in, in my courses. I'm going to show you how is it that I'm allowed to move. How is it that I, that I mix. I pre-mix my paint. I pre-thin it. Okay. Now let's do one of my little angels right here. Because I know some people are like, dude, how do you do your angels? It's the same way, guys. Oops, I ate that head. <laughs> I ate the head. 
There we go. See, there's a gesture happening, okay? There's some sort of gesture happening. In order for the for the body to have some sort of realism, okay? The head has to be significantly smaller. In order for the body to have some sort of realism, I'm 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 doing what is called negative painting here. Negative space painting in order to give more shape, right? Look. More definition. You see that? I hope you guys can see that. Um, there, there, there is a, a trick also, let's say that you want to um, do certain gestures, okay? Now this is people walking or whatever. Let's say that you're doing gestures. All you really have to do is just kind of imagine. Now this is the beauty about the, the way of loose brush, right? Loose brush painting is that you're suggesting something. You're not painting something, you're suggesting. It's, it's you're subject, suggesting, suggesting, yes. So for example, this person, right, could be standing right here, like I'm doing, with their head down, see, the head is down, right? And then maybe, maybe one foot front, right? And then the other foot over here, and then maybe the hands right there, you want to suggest. Thank you so much, y'all. You want to suggest a movement. There is a movement, but it's suggestive. It's not. It's not so much sketch, or 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 or. Because in sketch, many people get lost too. When you do sketch painting, they want to get it just right. And what I want to do, I treat. I treat the oil paint brush like a sumi brush, like a Japanese brush. I want this. I want this. To do the work for me. I don't, I don't want to be like. I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be doing this type of shit. You know. When you're like. Oh, oh let me see. No. I want it to do the work for me. I don't want to come back to it. Here's another one. Okay. Maybe someone's. Someone's. Uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, moving their body. Or whatever. Like in those. Like in those type of. Rom Romanesque. Paintings, right? You see, you want to suggest a movement. It's only suggestive. You're 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 just you're you're not. You 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 shouldn't focus. If you if you're gonna do my deal, right? The way I do it, you shouldn't focus on trying to to. To get every single little thing right, it, it, one one trick that I that I it's not a trick, but it's a it's a one thing that I like to do is look at sumi painters. Look how they do it almost in one in one. You know, it's 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 a it's a one time deal, right? And for that you have to practice. To make it a one-time deal so that you're not coming back and coming back and coming back. Every time you're coming back, it's really because you don't know what you're doing. So you're not trusting yourself. You're not trusting yourself. This is how I'm able to do different things. By the way, if you want to do a child, all you have to do, right, is imagine. It has a lot to do with imagination, okay? You, you, need to, you need to make the head way bigger, right? The torso small and then the little feet, right? Oh, that's way big. But you need to do the head way bigger. Because children, children's heads are way bigger, right? And their torsos, of course, are small. I couldn't really show you right there. I hope you can see what I'm what I'm doing here. 
And this is this is how you suggest a figure in a landscape or a figure in a cityscape or, or whatever. You, you, but you gotta really, one way that I do this is that I constantly draw. I know a lot of people see me painting all the time. Uh, I draw more than I paint. And, and, and it's, it's what I like to do because it keeps me moving. See, it keeps me moving. I, I'm either drawing with, with charcoal, pen, watercolor. I know it's painting, but I use it as drawing too. Uh, or or uh, even when I'm painting, because my way of painting is very loose. It's a, it's a loose brush style that it allows me to freely draw as opposed to like I'm painting. It's like this donkey labor thing of painting, you know? I, 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 I don't want to do that because I, I did that already. I did that already for like 20 years. I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, so I decided to paint in a drawing way. And that's, that's where I'm at right now in my career. I paint in a drawing way. Let me show you uh, a figure with color. Okay, now that you guys saw that, let me just show you a little bit of what a figure with color would look like. Yeah, let me prepare this. There we go. I show you a figure with color now. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the 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 drawing first, and then I'm gonna show you. Okay, I'm gonna do the drawing. So let's say that I, this, this figure is just kind of like kicking it somewhere. Right? See the bodies is the bodies is slanted that way. You can even create a shadow if you want to. The body is going that way. And this 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 is the kind of stuff that you want to that you want to be practicing if you if you want to get more prolific. Because when you're doing loose brush, it's about being prolific. It's about it's about continuing a rhythm. You can't stop and 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 and, and I mean you can, right? Why not? To everybody paints different, but that's not how I do it. And that's not what I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach you guys how to, in an instant, how can you get it? And it's not formula formulaic either, where like it's the same. It's not the same. It's always changing. It's dynamic. What 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 you just want to keep in mind is the basic human figure. As you can see, I'll get back to that one right now. As you can see, the torso is where the the torso is with the where the mass is, and the legs are where are what suggest the movement. Okay. The legs are, are usually suggesting the movement. One's thicker, one's thinner. Why? Because you have movement, you know? This one, both are, are thick legs, but this one, this one right here is kind of, you know, fading a bit. You want to suggest movement. There has to be some sort of movement. This, this if, you, if you pay attention to, to uh, paintings by Renoir, Monet, especially Monet, Alfred Sisley, you can see their figures were very much just suggesting suggesting things that were happening. They weren't trying to paint the, the exact same thing because then you miss the whole painting. If you focus on just one area, I know a lot of artists do that. They're like, I paint Impressionism and then they focus on one area. That's not Impressionism or Expressionism because, because you want to focus on the whole painting. You can't just focus on one area. You can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna make this, this you know, as, as realistic and as, as, that's realism. That's a whole different thing. In Impressionism or a form of Impressionism, you want to suggest it's, 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 it's you're suggesting. El dibujo es la base, claro, exactamente. So you want to suggest that, and now I'm going to change my brush, right, to a thicker brush because now we're going to apply color. Now, usually I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it like that. I would, I would do a, a, a silhouette, but I want to show you how how you can get started with that. Okay, and I'm going to get some color. As you can see right here, just to kind of suggest a flesh tone with a bit of red, uh, dioxazine purple, and a little bit of yellow. And this is going to suggest a, 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 a uh, just a darker toned flesh, right? Look, just like that. Not much, right? You can't just kiss it. And then I'm going to get some green and some white, whatever, right? It doesn't matter because whatever the hell he wants to or she wants to be wearing, I don't know, right? And 
Remember, here's where the where the mass is, right? Here's where the mass is. And then we can do something like this. And then you can continue to play with that. It doesn't matter. For the shadow, I'm gonna to continue to do the, 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 the purple, right? And then I want you to see what I'm gonna do right now, okay? It's, it's negative painting. I'm gonna get some yellow because I want something bright around it, right? And look, I'm going to use the edge of my brush. This is what I'm focusing on, the edge of the brush, okay? I know a lot of you out there think that I don't know what the hell I'm doing when I'm painting so fast, but uh, I actually do. <laughs> look. I'm focusing on the edge of the brush. Look at that. Lila Gil says, uh, Lila, Lila Gil, I hope I pronounced it right. Uh, thank you for your tips. You're a great artist and person. Thank you so much. I appreciate that very, very much. And now we can change, now we can change color. We can play a little bit, right, with color. Now we can, we can make the face a little, just appear to have a little bit more light hitting it, right? You can do all sorts of things now, right? Now you can, you can even get the, the, a, a bit of red or pink and then just even play with the clothes, right? You can even play with the clothing. If you don't like his hairdo, you can change it. You can change it up, right? Or her hairdo, I don't know. It's just a person. I, I... It's a person, right? Look at that. Now, <clears throat> To express something even more that you guys have seen me do with my artwork, uh, maybe a little something else. There's a shadow here, right? But I, you can even play with the shadow a bit. There's a shadow here. The shadow is not the same thing as reflection, and reflection not only happens in water, as a lot of people think out there that the reflection only happens in water. Reflection also happens in pavement. Reflection, reflection happens in life. Right, so you can even create reflection. Now you create a shadow, and then you can create some reflection, and then you can you can pass a little bit of light around it. This is a silhouette that of light or a glow, an aura, whatever you want to call it, that I love using because it reinforces the figure. Okay, and I besides I saw Dali using it, so I was like, if it's good enough for Dali in his hyper-realistic paintings, it's going to be good enough for moi and my abstract expressionist works. There you go. You see? Luis, José, ¿cuánto dirías que hay de estudio y cuánto de saber particular en la pintura? Uh, I'm reading a Spanish, a Spanish question. Okay, a question, a Spanish question. A question in Spanish. <laughs> I apologize for that. Uh, José, ¿cuánto dirías que hay de estudio y cuánto de un saber particular en tu pintura? Ah, ok, I think I understand the question. Este, de estudio hay, hay básico. Y, y, y el, el saber, si entiendo bien la pregunta, el saber es más que nada experiencia y, y jugar, jugar y jugar y jugar, pero de estudio, lo que viene siendo composición y, y ese tipo de cosas, hay, es muy básico mi estudio. Mi estudio, yo, yo, no, yo no opté por hacer algo, eh, dedicarme a las artes, a, a, al, al estudio clásico del arte. El mío fue más, más por experiencia. Uh, 
siempre eh, cargué desde chico este, dibujos conmigo, cargaba papel y, 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 y este, siempre estaba dibujando. Hasta, hasta la fecha sigo dibujando y no, es, no, no hay tanto estudio en mi, en, mi, en, mi, uh, en mi experiencia, no hay tanto estudio, hay más experiencia directa mía personal. Y eso es lo que, lo que me, siento yo que me ha ayudado mucho. Okay, so, so, so someone here asked, Luis asked, how much, if I understood the, the question correctly, how much do, do I think I have in, in how much is, is, is uh, uh, school, right? How much is, is uh, classical, I guess, or yeah, classical uh, knowledge, learning from a teacher, etc. And how much is it that, uh, that I just kind of learn on my own? And I was, I was answering that, that, man, I totally, I totally butchered that question. And, and I just answered in Spanish that, that it's very little classical study. I, 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 I opted for learning through experience, through, through myself. I did shadow artists. I did study books. I did attend courses. But I didn't go deep in the classical study. I didn't really care much for it. What I cared more was about... Uh, experiential, going in front and seeing it myself, and of course using 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 tools and using uh, uh, concepts that are already established, right? Uh, little things such as the rule of thirds in composition, or or basic human anatomy, and on and on and on. But there wasn't that much. There's there's more experience, uh, more from life drawings and, and whatnot. So so there it is. So I hope you guys can see the difference between, you see this person could be having, you're suggesting, again, I know that's the key word right now, you're suggesting this person could have their hands in their pockets. And then this, you may be, you may be missing this leg peripherally, I hope I said that word correctly, because this, this has more mass, right? The, the left leg has more mass than the right one. And it's the one moving forward. The right one you may be missing. You may be missing. Again, if you put all of the information, it might not be the right thing to do. That's not for me. Putting all the information in a painting, to me, it's, 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 it's killing a painting. It's like, even photographers don't put all the information in the photography. That's a little tip for you out there. Even photographers don't do that. Oh, which is, ah, de nada, de nada, Luis. Luis says that I, I understood his question perfectly. Uh, even photographers don't do that. Even Degas said, even when painting from life, I think, I think it was Edgar Degas, the one who said, uh, even when painting from life, you have to compose. If I'm not mistaken, he's the one who said that. If I am mistaken, oh well. But uh, even from painting in life, you have to compose. One of, one of the great artists said that. I hope it was Degas. So you always have to compose, right? You're composing. This is why I don't, I didn't want to go with learning, uh, just classical painting because I know, there's nothing wrong with it. I think that that it would it would probably be really good, right? But but one of the reasons is because I I've always been a fan of of expressionist works and and many times an expression in in, in it, one can can probably hinder the other if you're not careful and. Because, because in expressionism, you have to use more of your imagination. Your imagination is much more important than, than getting the tone right, than getting the light right. And see, I didn't care about much of that here. I just understand, okay, the head is in proportion, right? This is, uh, uh, there's the mass. This is where the person's moving. And now everything is just start suggesting, suggesting things. You're, 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 you're leaving, you're putting information and leaving some information out. It's very much like playing a tune in music. So, let me show you guys. See, there's the figure. And these are the figures, very simple figures. You know, this is a, could be, very well be a child, right? Remember, the, the, larger, the larger head is the, the smaller the children, right, the child. Smaller the head is an adult. And, and all the mass is in the torso, right? All the mass is in the torso, and the legs and the shoulders suggest, are suggesting a movement. 
just like here. Right, the legs and the and the and the shoulders are suggesting the movement. This is where your movement is. Pay attention to to uh, uh, performing arts, ballerinas, dancers. The, the legs and the shoulders suggest very much the movement. The arms, the shoulders, right. So there it is, guys. I hope this little tutorial of how to paint figures or how I paint figures uh, was handy in your next paintings. I hope that you guys enjoy this. Uh, I love doing these little things. Uh, and again, I'm going to be doing some uh, full courses. Step, step by step by step, I'm going to walk you through doing them. I know that, that this these are more, uh, uh, they're faster, they have more speed. But I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through my palette. I just got a new studio, and I'm going to uh, be doing uh, courses for my studio, uh, and uh, and with the right lighting and and whatnot. That way you guys can see, and they're gonna be longer. They're I'm probably gonna do them. I don't know, an hour or so. They're gonna be longer courses specifically just for that. You know, I just wanted to give you a test, a, a test, a taste. Of what is coming in my courses and I hope you enjoy that uh, thank you so much you're welcome you're welcome Jolly Jolly says uh, thank you very much Jose so helpful I love that look at that ain't it awesome I love that like what is that that what is that vermilion pinkish thing doing in this person's back I don't know why not <laughs> this is just the way I do things guys thank you so much have fun, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon again, all right? And, oh, by the way, uh, stay tuned, because I'm going to be announcing the, the, the courses on, on, on a video too very soon. So take care, all right? Adios.